Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this spike trap in Ascent Combat Framework. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to my content browser, right click in the open space, select blueprint class and create an actor. And I'm gonna call this BP underscore floor spikes. And I'm gonna double click to open up the blueprint editor. And now what I wanna do is under my components tab on the left, I'm gonna add a static mesh and I'm just gonna call this um, floor trap and another static mesh, which is gonna be the actual spikes. So I'll just call this spikes. And for the floor trap, I am just gonna select uh, a floor trap, which is gonna be called SM prop trap spears. And again, you can just use this um, with, you can just use cubes or something if you don't have this asset pack. But for this asset pack, I am using the Cinti Polygon Dungeons pack, really nice looking asset pack provided by Cinti. And yeah, amazing looking graphics, love this low poly style. And they do have a ton of traps that we can use for our projects. So after setting the floor trap, I'm just gonna click spike and I'm gonna set up the spikes asset. So for the dungeons pack, this is gonna be called SM prop trap spears. And I'll just select that. And this looks pretty perfectly positioned already once I place them in. And these traps, of course, these spikes were made for this base. Anyways, so now what I'm gonna do is on my event graph on begin play, I'm going to create a timeline. And this timeline will be called spikes floor. And I'll just delete the other two for the on begin actor overlap and the event tick. And I'll double click my spikes floor. And what I'm gonna do is just create a new float track with the length of four. So I'm just gonna select four and add a float track. And I'm gonna make sure that looping is set. The name I'll just leave as um, spike intervals and so on. You can name this whatever you want. And now I'm gonna add three, actually a few pins. So the first one I'm gonna add is at zero and zero. And then the next one is gonna be something like 0.1, maybe like 0.123 and 0.98. And then the second one will still be at that 0.98. And the second one will be something like at 0.7, so around like almost a second up. I just want to come up really quick and go back down and then also do 0.98 for the value just to keep it up here. And then I'll add another one where it sinks down. So I'll drag this new one, the fourth pin around like 1.1 and zero, or actually maybe something like negative 0.5 or negative 0.1. And then I'm gonna have it give it like a little bit of a rubber band. So I'm just gonna place another one around 1.6 and zero. And then at the very end, I'm gonna keep it at four and zero. So for the time I'll do four and zero. And this may look a little finicky. Uh, it is kind of a lot. It is gonna be like a bit of a realistic spike looking trap in this case, but I am just gonna select them and click two on the keyboard on each of them. And what two does is just sets it to the to this user or auto. In this case, you can click one over them and you can play around with this curvature depending on how you want it. If you want to spike up really high and then come down really quick, for example, and so on. So for this one, I'm just gonna have it sync pretty quickly, just like that. And for this one, I'll just leave it flat. Okay, so this looks pretty good to me and I'll hit compile and save. And now back in my event graph, what I want to do is do a lerp vector. So after the update, I actually want to set relative location and this will be for the spikes itself and you'll, it'll say target a scene component. And this is just going to control our spikes and we want it to go up and down. And now for the new location, I'm going to do a lerp vector node. So this is going to tell it how far up and down it should go and at what intervals. So we're going to connect the spike interval to the alpha to tell it every four seconds. It's going to do that up and down with the spikes and I'm gonna leave my X and Y at zero because I only want to go up and down, which is the Z axis. So for the A, I'm gonna do something like negative 250. And currently, if you click on your spikes, you'll see that the location is at zero already. But if I were to type negative 250, this is exactly how it would look. And since the base will be on the ground, you won't be able to see the spikes because they'll be underground. So this looks pretty perfect to me. So I'll leave this at zero, zero, zero. Hit compile and save, go back to the event graph. And now all I want to do is that when basically on a component begin overlap with the spikes, we wanna apply the damage. So I'll click on my spikes here, scroll all the way down and do on component begin overlap. And when we overlap this object, we're gonna apply damage. 
And I'll highlight these and click Q on my keyboard to just even up this line. And for the other actor, I'm gonna select damage actor. And the base damage, I'll do something like uh, 100 in this case. And for the damage type class, I'm gonna select ACF cut damage type. Just a personal preference, but whatever damage type you're using in this case, if you wanna make your character bleed a bit, you can make a bleeding type, damage type, and so on. And one more thing before we get into testing it out is that when I click on spikes, I am going to, I'm gonna go down to the collisions tab and make sure character can't step on the spikes because we have spikes highlighted. And then for the collision presets, I'm gonna select custom. And now I'm gonna make sure collision enabled, query and physics is selected, and the object type can be, um, it can be world static. This part doesn't really matter too much, but for the visibility and camera, I am just gonna do overlap, overlap, IK trace, I can ignore. And now what we wanna do is if your apply damage is hitting you twice, that's because you have pawn and team one taking traces. So basically one of them has to be set to ignore. In this case, I'm just gonna select pawn. Actually, I'm gonna select all of these to ignore until I get to team one. So everything from world static to destructible will be on ignore. And then I wanna overlap my team one to team four. And this is basically just gonna say that any of the enemies also can also take trap damage. So in case you wanna lead enemies to your trap, they can take damage as well. So I compile and save. So now I'm gonna go back to my world, drag this VP spikes in, hit play. And now let's see it. Let's check it out. So it is actually going a little high, but let's test that at work. So when I'm standing on it and I do take damage, so that looks good, taking exactly 100 damage. And I'll show you the error after if you wanna stick around to the video and learn a little bit more. So I'm just gonna set this to, so negative 250 is fine because it is, um, oh, you know what? It's the timeline that's doing it. Okay, I see. So all I need to do is go to the event graph and set this to something like, I'll do negative 20. So when I go back to my map after setting the Z axis to negative 20, you're gonna see that perfect. It is it is a lower a low enough so that it looks like the spike's not flying off the trap and I'm taking the correct amount of damage. Now let me show you the error I was talking about just for learning purposes if you do wanna know the in-depth stuff of ECF and the really nitpicky stuff. And if you are gonna be using this to make a game, I recommend you learn this because I made this mistake and it did take me a while to figure out. So when I go to my spikes, I go down to collision and set pawn to overlap as well. I set damage base damage to 100, right? So now when I click play and step on the trap, you're gonna see that I take 200 damage. And that's because there's two collision traces going on. One is for the pawn, which is this character's parent, 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 parent class, because ACF is built on top of Unreal classes. And then the other one is for team one, which is the proper ACF collision trace you generally want to use for your objects and stuff. Mostly because in the samples, ACF cut damage and so on is built for those team one through fours and neutrals. And that's how you make a pretty simple spike trap along with some rambling about the uh, collisions. Thanks for watching Kodudro. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.